Before we get started, I the only reason I get to do these interviews is because of the House of Aurora. They're our great sponsor, partner. I want to give them a huge shout out. Um, thank you, House of Aurora. Um, thank so, you, House of Aurora. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, House of Aurora. Um, right. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, good morning. Um, when did you guys, we're at TIFF, and I'm curious, for each of you, uh, this is my favorite film festival. I love the energy here. What does it mean for each of you to be a part of this festival, and when did you find out that you were going to be a part of the festival? Uh, let's see. Um, I think it was about just over a month ago. Um, I have never been to Toronto before to the festival. I've shot here a lot over the years. But um, I think we should have found out about, um, you know, six weeks ago or something, but I had no idea at that time that we were a special presentation and I had no idea that we were going to be in that unbelievable theatre, the Winter Garden. Yeah. Well, I'm, I was born in Canada and uh, spent a lot of my early childhood here and have shot in Toronto and been in Toronto and done the jury for TIFF um, in previous years. Um, so it's really meaningful and really special and really you know it's 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 a this is a, a big deal that we get to premiere our teeny tiny little movie at such a beautiful big film festival yeah and this is probably i think the third or fourth time we've had a film at the festival and it's a beautiful festival to come to i've only ever been to toronto for the festival and i love the city but also How there's always shot here i know i know i'd love to actually i love it um um, but it always seems to be a great array of movies and the audiences here are so passionate. They always feel like it's a very kind of filmmaker driven festival and you know the questions are always so interesting because it's usually like film students and it does feel like like such a kind of champion of well, it's what filmmaking. film festivals are supposed yeah. to be about. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Uh, I, I hate asking generic questions, but I have to do one, which is everyone watching this interview will not have seen the movie yet. Mm -hmm. It's gonna, you know what I mean. So, could you talk a little bit about what the film is about? Uh, let's just start with that. Okay. So the film is um, really, I would say, probably thematically, it's about change, ultimately. Um, but um, it's a love story uh, between an unexpected love story about between two women uh, set in the 1950s in Scotland, and they're both um, marginalised outsider um, women who find uh, solace and support and um, intimacy with each other. Uh, for each of you, uh, what was it about this project that said I want to be a part of it? Like. You know, the first time you read the script, was it? Just talk a little bit about that. Um, when I read the script, I just thought it was a beautiful um, story of, about a relationship that really, um, from two lonely outsiders that come together and help each other, and um, if, and they leave the relationship it with far more self worth and confidence and understanding and um, and are able to to take that into their future lives and I thought and it has such a positive ending and I think that is quite rare in stories particularly set in this time about um, this kind of relationship and I am um, and so it was really beautiful to have this kind of story with such a positive message at the end it just felt incredibly truthful to me and very real and ugly in the right ways and beautiful in the right ways and about ultimately sort of how people connect and that sometimes the happily ever after ending where everyone skips off into the sunset or somebody dies as we mm. were asked repeatedly yesterday yeah. is it nice to do a romance film where nobody dies it was like actually yes yes yeah. it is um, I, I just realized that i'm like that, that's very true yeah <laughs> you know? uh yeah no one has to be punished and uh and uh, our film does not ultimately end with our two, you know, females living a happily ever after life together, but it ends with them both being set free in ways that are emotionally completely sort of impossible to imagine at the beginning of the film mm -hmm. and gives them courage and gives them new lives. And which is ultimately, I mean, isn't that kind of what love's about? Mm -hmm. Completely. I, I, when I, I speak to a lot of actors, and everyone that I've spoken to has obviously a different process on set. Some people love silence. Some people love music. It's all about you know what makes them comfortable to get ready. 
how do you two like to work on set and was it like a like a match? Or was I like 7,000 live bees ready to sting the entire crew chasing you around the swamps and locks of Scotland keeping you on in the toes. rain. I, that, that actually really gets me going. Right. It what? makes me really happy. Right. I also really enjoy waiting for bees to decide that they want to come out of their hives right. because they don't like bad weather. Right. I didn't think about any of that. And yes, that makes complete sense. And I like hot tea. Right. But, but seriously, because it's cold. Right. But being being serious, do you like like the silence before you go on? Do you have like a thing where you're, like you're listening to music or? I have a couple of different sort of philosophies on that. One was from a very dear friend who directed the first play I was ever in, who said that you can't take the music on stage with you, so don't put it in your ears right when you're trying to prepare, mm. and that like it's actually not necessarily helpful to sit with something that you cannot then take out on stage with you. However, the noise of being on a film set is extraordinary and sometimes you do need to cocoon yourself. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of go 50-50 on that one. And, and for you? Um, I guess it depends on the project and the character and how it's how the crew as a whole is developing and the process of the director. So um, I, I feel like it shifts all the time, but I always know I need to find a grounding in a reality of the scene that I'm in. It's like I need to know where everything is. Like it kind of, a, you know, it's, for me it ends up being all about props. It's like, where am I? Where, am, where is the physicality of what I'm in and that I can move sort of from outwards in? Sure. In How, I'm curious the way you like to have the energy on set as a director and has your process uh, changed throughout your career? Well, in this particular case, it was just such a fast and furious shoot that uh, there really wasn't a lot of time to... Um, process. Yeah, to process. We were just, you know, we were just, like, just tunneling through. Um, ideally, I mean, in my ideal world, I love to have rehearsal time, and we were very fortunate in having mm -hmm. that time because mm -hmm. we didn't really have a lot of time to do much prep for specific scenes once we were on set so it was a lot of talking and um, debating actually about what the intention was ultimately and so we so the process for me was in the prep I would say more so than um, having to have anything specific and also we were you know we had I think that in this particular case we had to be very resourceful because we only had very limited locations. So we had to, you know, we were in such fast turnaround on mm. every scene from day to day and we were shooting so quickly. So I was so thankful to have the prep time with yeah. Anna and But that's Holly. also one of the really beautiful things about independent filmmaking is that you end up having to be more creatively resourceful because you don't have all the toys and you don't have all the money and there's no, oh, we'll come back and get it tomorrow or this yeah. location doesn't work, we're gonna find a new, no, you have what what you have and sure. that's it. And you better get it and you better get it fast. And it makes people very quick on their feet. And sometimes I think really inspirational things transpire in those sorts of quite tense <laughs> situations that I think are actually kind of amazing, which you just don't have on a huge film mm -hmm. where you have, where you can be sort of a little bit lazy sure. about your time and how you manage it. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that on indie filmmaking, maybe it's more happy accidents because you're just barreling through, you know? Yeah, but also people just, you know, you end up, it's a, filmmaking is a team sport. You end up going with whoever has the best idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's not necessarily the person whose job it was to have that idea. It's whoever actually was like, oh, hey, we could do this like this. And then suddenly the whole day is saved by, you know, one person who mm -hmm. maybe didn't have that job title, but had a good idea because they had eyes and they were paying attention and they cared. Sure. What did you learn from any early screenings uh, that impacted the finished film? We only did one early screening, um, which we did have a questionnaire that we put out to everybody. So um, the feedback was very interesting, actually. There was... Um, there was, well, I don't want to, you know, without giving too much away. I was going to say, yeah, no spoilers. Yeah. You know, there's there's an element of um, 
otherworldliness about this story. And some people that just doesn't sit comfortably with, and others absolutely love it. So there was a bit of a mixed reaction to that. Um, I think there was actually quite a lot of surprise at how dark there are parts of the film became because ostensibly with the love story it didn't seem as though it was going to go to those places but it does and there is definite even though it's not fortunately our two women that suffer that but um so i think that was it, it was it was very interesting actually getting getting that feedback um there was nothing specific that would we you know that we could do to change it because that is innately the story but it was fascinating having that input uh before i run out of time with you guys everyone who's been coming in has been playing something called get to know your tiff attendee i swear these are harmless questions although she looked very nervous <laughs> let's let's see if she reacts i'm naturally suspicious right okay so um for the two for the actors uh huh? what tv show would you love to guest spot on and what tv show would you love to guest direct oh. i would love to guest direct succession everyone is talking about that show right now it is fantastic shakespearean contemporary uh, fantastic uh, character development tremendous performances the acting is phenomenal and it just um it just hits every beat i would love to do that i want to be on the west wing back when aaron sorkin was still writing it <laughs> thumbs up i completely yes <laughs> i literally binge watch season after season of that like it's a lullaby Right. Like every There's a question coming up you'll be able to I've go just even been further. His masterclass. <laughs> yeah. He's he's what we call talented. Yeah. No, I I I but I want to literally be Alison Janney. Right. <laughs> I understand. I'd also like to be 5'11". I mean, that would be right. nice. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, if I could go back in time, or if they ever do another season, I'd, I just loved The Wire. Um, that would be like, <laughs> that would be like acting stretch as well, <laughs> um, depending on like what character it was. But at the moment, I keep finding myself rewatching um, both The Crown and Transparent, which are both like totally different, and the idea of like guest spotting and things that are completely uh, we, yeah. separate from each other like, is quite, you know, intriguing. Can I? Yes. Can I? Can I go one more time on that? Of course. Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah take two. Um, <laughs> Treme. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Because I have a huge love of music mm -hmm. and and actually performance, and um, so that was a show that I just would have just that would have been my dream job. To it's it's interesting about that. Treme if you haven't seen it. I've been to New Orleans many times mm -hmm. after watching Treme going back. Completely different appreciation for New Orleans. Oh, well, I haven't yet. I'm yet to go to New Orleans. I've never been. Oh, you're going to have a blast. One so. of our True Blood directors was one of the creators on that. So, yeah. Um, and we spent quite a bit of time yeah. in Louisiana. It's, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I would imagine it was a little bit yeah. <laughs> uh, Do you guys have a favorite sci fi or fantasy film? I do. Let's yeah, hear it. What is it? 2001. This Kubrick guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm going to be disloyal to like 17 different franchises that I feel like I'm a part of um, in some loose way if I name one. Yeah. So I decline to answer on the I, basis that my answer may offend people that I get I to understand. I understand. It's all good. I, Go X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not a massive nerd when it comes to sci-fi, um, but you know anything that would uh, that would kind of dress me up in something ridiculous <laughs> really exciting. Uh, I want to go again. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this We're just going to go again. We're just going to go one more time. Um, Under the Skin. Uh, uh, yeah. It's just one of my most favourite films ever yeah. and books. Um, I just think it's just, it's such an unusual science fiction film. Yeah. But it is science fiction. Uh, yeah. What's the background photo on your phone? My kids. My daughter. Whatever the phone came with. <laughs> uh, what movie have you watched more than 20 times? The Departed. The Sound of Music. Uh, Gold Rush. Also True Romance. <laughs> These are all great. Do you own any movie or TV show props? Um, the ones that I worked on count? Yeah, yeah definitely. from my own stuff. I definitely yeah. own stuff. I, don't, I mean, I can't think what, but um, I think I still have a tea set from the piano. 
Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, gee, that's amazing. amazing. That is, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. It's currently, like, basically set dressing in my mother's house. But amazing. I have... I did an episode of Electric Dreams last year called oh, The Hood Maker. Yeah, we did the same... The yeah, nice we did the same... Series. Uh, what do you call it? Anthology. And yeah. then we worked together. Yeah. That we worked together. Um, but I had... I was just called The Hood Maker, and I have a hood from that. Uh, super jealous. Um, on yeah. that note, I'm going to say thank you so much for coming in. I so appreciate it. Congratulations on being part of TIFF. And if you look to the right, you will see many other people. <laughs> um, thank you. Right. I will oh, go oh, now. So, so that last can... question. Answer the last one. Oh I'm ready. Go on. It's a wooden penis. Oh. Wait. Is it from it, No, is it from, it's actually from, from a commercial. <laughs> it was from a commercial. And I had a cadaver, supposedly. And it was for a sports drink. And the wooden penis had to actually have an erection underneath the um, cloth that covers you and so it was really complicated make, get doing a realistic penis and actually, actually sure. going through the motions realistically because Does there's, someone have there's to go it, like that underneath to make it <laughs> <laughs> I think there's other people <laughs> I'm going to tell you something really funny though before we wrap. Um, apparently, during Game of Thrones, when Tyrion, there was a set with uh, a brothel, and they had a lot of wooden penises, and they sent out an email to all the Game of Thrones people saying, "Please stop stealing the wooden penises." Really? Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> well, we had an orgy on True Blood season three, I think, and we had poor, unfortunate young PAs that had to go around and police that people weren't actually having sex. Oh my gosh! Wow. Because wow. we hired because they hired our background from. Um, adult entertainment. Oh, that is <laughs> wow! That's amazing. That's it's like what I, a, what I a see your HBO story that. and I raise you. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm right. Game of Thrones. I would guess for in. Oh, yeah. I mean, I do anything in that. Yeah. Apart from you know, the, if they have to get naked. Uh, so this, the, I'm kind of waiting. The, the Game of Thrones thing is kind of good. But listen, I know we, you have other stuff to and go do. you guys do. have yeah, people. Listen, yeah. I really sincerely thank you so much. Thank you. Congrats. Uh, I'm you. super happy I could help promote the movie. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you very much. Thank you.